Waterford had men over and looked for the tall athletic figure of Dan Shanahan and that's his first ever goal in Championship Hurling. Hello and welcome along to the Life Changing Moments podcast series on The 42. I'm Fintan O'Toole and we're going to chat shortly today to our first guest in the series, Waterford hurling legend Dan Shanahan. The winner of four Munster Senior Hurling medals during his county senior career, three All-Star awards and he was the Hurler of the Year as well in 2007. Now we've teamed up with UPMC, the official healthcare partner of the GPA and GAA to produce this Life Changing Moments podcast series. With over 40 hospitals, 700 doctors and 90,000 employees globally, UPMC is providing life-changing medicine to communities across Ireland. To find out more, go to www.upmc.ie. So as I mentioned, Dan Shanahan is our guest today and he joins us now. Dan, how are you keeping? Fit and how are you? Good, thank you, bye. Thanks for joining us today. It's great to have you on. And we're going to look back today at a moment that had a major impact in shaping your hurling career You've gone for the 2004 Munster hurling quarterfinal on the 16th of May that year in Semple Stadium when you lined out for Waterford against Clare and finished the game with 3-1 to your name. Obviously a very, very memorable occasion, but I guess the background to this game is that you were coming off the back of a league final the previous week against Galway, I think it was, which didn't go so well for you. Yeah, uh, 100% fit. Um, I suppose we, we didn't go well against Galway. Um, for myself, personally, I got one three the same day. Um, one of the few lads maybe to play well on the day against Galway in, in, in Limerick but again it really set me up confidence wise for the Clare game and to be honest with you written off as from the start against Clare it's such an awesome team going out on paper with any daily in charge and, like, you know, and we weren't given any chance going in there with the week after losing the week the league final within a week and going out playing championship the week after like, you know, so um, it was a, it was a it hard pill to swallow when you lose a league final but Again, a, a good start to get a, get get on the horse straight away the week after. The schedule obviously jumps out there, the fact that you had to face into such a big game seven days later. And you think maybe, you know, you might be a little bit tired at the start, but I mean, you went ahead 2-7 to a point. You got the two goals. You completely exploded from the blocks that day in Semple Stadium. Yeah, unbelievable. Uh, Fintan, to be honest, I, I was there. And, do you know, I think Milan, for within a minute, uh, had, won, had won a free and I got a score. And I thought from the start they were really, really, were really hurt going into the game from the comments from from the media, from our own people, from people outside that had given us no chance at the performance against Clare, against that goal with the previous week, sorry. And to go into the game, we were really fired up for that game. Justin had us absolutely fired up. You saw it there. Um, the main we won a free, we're the crowd, we're getting behind the crowd, just keep us going, keep us going, keep us going, like you know, and some people say it was over the top. I think Michael Dignan said it on day, we probably didn't do too much showboat, and I don't think we did. We were really up for the game. We were being knocked all week um, going into that game. And to put in, put, put in a performance like we did that day against a massive team where you had the Lohans, Shawnee Mack, Colin Lynch, Jerry Quinn, you know, James, you came on. I suppose a lot of people, Dan, would associate your career with goal scoring is obviously a big thing uh, part of your play in Watford Colours but at this time it wasn't you know a, a big thing for you I mean it's it's kind of hard to believe when you think of seasons like 2007 but that this game in 2004 actually marked your first uh, goal in senior championship for Waterford Yeah Fintan I would have scored I think 28 points going into the going into that that game against Clare no goal um, I wouldn't have been the best, the best of form coming up to Previous years, do you know what I mean? So that really, the way this game really stands out for me. Like it really put me on the map as in getting goal, getting um, around the square there. As I said, the previous week, I got a goal around the square against Galway in the league final. Confidence was up. Fitness, was, for myself personally, were unbelievable. And for most of the Warford team, it was unbelievable. Like, you know, and I had the confidence going in against Conor Plunkett. It was on me the same day. Like, you know, and, you know, where I get my where I got my goals from that day was around the square, around Brian Lowen's area. Like, you know, and, you know, it was just when, when you're playing with confidence and you have the fitness levels. I think I followed the ball in about every ball I went in over my head going towards towards Davy inside and goal at the time. I followed about 50 balls in Fintan that day. Like, you know, and my third goal I got actually just came off the top of the post just for me. And I put it in the you know, so it's it's just the, the routine of following in every ball. Some say you might follow in 20 balls and get no ball, but to just see the click for me that day. Like, you know, really, really that game, I really think put myself as, as getting goals. I'm really um, building my confidence going into the rest of the, the future for myself. That became like a really 
key factor in your play it felt like you know your ability to kind of get in behind defenses and we saw it that day like I think you would feel the Brian Lowen for the first goal on the left hand side and then you got in on the right hand side for the second one was that a tactically something around that time in 2004 you were starting to work on and, and starting to target? Uh, it wasn't really Fenton to be honest with you I think this John Milan was usually behind me in that corner like you know he usually go to field and if you watch the game he was spent a lot of his time out the field not in the second half but in the first half he really created the space for me um, I just drifted in for the first goal I can remember playing this day that the ball came in high to me and for Conor Plunkett went up and, and, and Brian Lohan went up and I played the hurley from behind Conor just flicked it at this and, and I just said to myself like you know I was fairly something I was fairly good at Fenton was kind of playing the hurley without getting caught if you know what I'm saying to you that some referees would blow for it if they heard it but again I just it's all about timing and I think the second goal I got to him was a clearance from Dave Bennett. Tony, Tony cleared the first one. We see it actually, if I'm being honest with you. Tony went for a scream of a point, miss hit it, and it fell around the square. And Dave Bennett came on and miss hit it again. And it actually popped up off Seamus Pinder, and Davey came to meet me. I just put it past him. Like, you know, and, like, you know from where I come from, Fenton, to get two goals in Munster Championship, and for what I'd done myself, um, you know, not being playing previous years with Justin, to put my head down and work hard, it really, really opened my eyes and really opened the, the, like, what, I, what I could do. Again, with the help of Jerry Fitzpatrick, who was unbelievable for me at the time, getting my fitness levels up. And again, with the help of Justin, and um, with my hurling and my teammates, like, you know, and the confidence I had in myself going into them games. And You mentioned fitness and I suppose maybe having to be patient over the previous couple of years. So it sounds like you put in a huge amount of hard work in the off season to get ready for this day at the start of the 2004 Championship. I mean, to get the reward then, I mean, like, what, what was it like for you at half time going in, Waterford ahead, and you're, and you're after getting two goals in a championship game? I think the response after getting the first two goals fit when I started holding my jersey and fisting the crowd and stuff really showed the the pleasure and the, the, the relief of the work I had put in from the start of the year. Like, you know, I really up my ante myself personally. I wasn't, like I always say, 2003 was the final pitcher, 2004 was the final pitcher. It's two different men. You know, I, I'm two stone lighter, I'm faster, I'm fitter. My hurling is better, my head is better. You know, and you're playing with confidence and you know, when I got that first goal, I, I ran out to my number 10 position. Like they always did to face the puck out. But by God, did I, did I fist pump going out there. I, I, I'll never say I overdid it because it's some relief that, that you spend so much time trying to get goals and trying to work on, on, on stuff on, on your fitness away from the, away from the field. I can basically remember going into the gym, squatting 100 kgs, 120 kgs. My best mate come over to me. I didn't want to talk to him because I was in the zone. Do you know, you're going to some see people in some gyms now and they go in and have a chat and the, the distraction comes in and they're not focused on what they're doing. Like, you know, back then I was totally focused on what I was doing um, to get to where I wanted to be. Like, you know, um, I was disappointed with previous years. I didn't have the, got, got the opportunity to maybe stake a claim on the team. But again, it was up to me to go in and do it. And I did it with, with, the, help of my, with the help of Jerry Fitzpatrick and Justin, of course. You've mentioned earlier the third goal then arrived in the second half to complete the hat-trick. Again, I guess it's a reward for what you were talking about. Keep making those runs in. And I think it was a point attempt, hits the post, and it falls down for you perfectly. Just if Davy fits the beat and you, you pull it to the net and, and you're after getting a hat-trick uh, against Clare in that once a quarter-final. Yeah, um, unbelievable. And the brick, who, who actually didn't, he actually got a point after that, hit the, hit the ball, hit the top of the post. And I suppose when your look is infant and your look is in, and I just fired it in, I could see, I could... The minute the brick had hit the ball, I turned, if you watched the, the, the video or the match again, I turned straight away, just anticipating that it would come off the post. I didn't meet it with the perfect strike off the ground, but I tell you, I just, put, I just pinned it into the corner where Davey couldn't get to it. Like, you know, and to be honest, I nearly hopped the back wire, but the was supporters were down the, down the bottom in the tallest there after the game. To get a hat-trick, as I said, in a Munster Championship game, 2004, to know after being written off the week before, or you can even, in Justin's interview after the game, that so-called pundits with us, with us off the way we'd picked the team against Galway do you know I thought Kim McGrath was awesome the same day at centre back and the whole war being honest with you Fintan I thought it was the best team performance out of a Waterford team for years because I don't think ever have John Milan Dan Shanahan Paul Flynn I think they got 1-8 in total they got maybe 1-5 for mistakes from, from, from us that's how dominant we were on, on that day against a great clear team who I don't much respect for the fact that it was clear, was that make it a bit extra special? Because you've mentioned some of the names, like some of the absolute icons of the game. They were still playing for them at that time. And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking 98, I suppose, is talked about a lot, the two Munster finals that year. But even 2002, you had finally made the Munster Championship breakthrough, but it was them that beat you in the All-Ireland semi-final that year in Crop Park. So 
I don't know, was there a sense that maybe you, you owed them one a little bit when you met them in 2004? Definitely, Fenton, I think if you remember 98, must have final as well, we we had the drawing game and we had, the, I suppose, the activity in, in the must have final replay in the 98 where, where um, they came out and really, really hit us hard off the ball and, and again in 2002 where they bit us above and Crow Park. So it was in the back of our heads, to be honest with you, but I have to admire the clear team that was out there. You know, have the loans, when David Howie came on, uh, Tony Griffin was playing, Camerdy, Jamesy, like, you know, um, this goes on, Markham. Like, they had all won our Ireland's, like, you know, and they were really up for it again. With Anthony Daly in charge, and, like, I felt sorry for Anthony Daly and Ollie Baker. Ollie Baker was midfield, and like, we had to take off Ollie after 20 minutes, our, our midfield were so on top, like, you know, and to take off on your, on your mates that you'd won our Ireland's with, I say it must be tough on Anthony Daly because, um, he would have won our earnings with these as in respect to take him off after 20 minutes. So it must have been heartbreaking for Anthony. But of course, the show is the caliber of the man too to make the big decisions. But we were just so on top that um, even Brian O'Connor was on, on Milan uh, and the day he was taken off five minutes later. Um, because Milan was just on fire and the, the same day, Fintan. Like, you know, and it would have been in the back of our heads, to be honest with you. They'd beaten us and above in Crow Park where we were on top again. And we'd lost in 2002 and 98, especially the, the way they came out in the second game and um, really gave it to us and deservedly won, won the Munster. But it would have been, uh, it was great justice the way we went out and we bought our game, our intensity to the maybe with respect to the older lads of the Clare lads at the time and they couldn't handle it on the day of fencing. Like, you know, and if we'd meet him again, it might never have happened that much, but on that day where it just did happen and clicked for us. It must stand out as one of the most memorable Munster titles Wadford have ever won because you've beaten Clare by 19 points and what you did after that, you beat Tipperary by a point, you beat Cork by a point. I mean, they're hard-earned provincial title wins. You've obviously been involved in management uh, in the side of things in recent years, so you, you, know, you know all about it. But like to beat three sides of that stature, it must really, really stand out for the county and for yourself to have been a part of it. Yeah, 100% uh, Fintan. Um... I suppose beating Clare after losing the league final, beating Clare, you would tip rarely again. But in two weeks after that, like you know, the, we were really under pressure going into the game um, because of the performance against Clare, the three scoring, three twenty one, only conceding one eight. To you know, can we offer do it again? The pundits were asking the questions, right? We we're asking ourselves in training. We need to perform again like that to get to get to the Munster final, like you know. And to Justin's credit, and he slicked us. Like we, we we were only ever planned for one game. Tipperary was one after that. The one after that was Cork. You know, and to win Munster the way we won it that year, and look for myself personally, just it was great as well. Like you know, to to get two goals against Tip and to get the goal and three points in the Munster final, like you know, it, it was unbelievable for me personally. Uh, it, but I don't think it would have happened if it wasn't for the one three against Galway or the three one against Clare. Be brutally honest with you, that, that just bit my confidence when I got two goals against Tip this, the, two weeks later, and I got the the one three off a probably one of the best teams uh, around against Cork at the time. Uh, the players they had at the way Munster looked as the second best trophy um, outside of the All-Ireland like you know and the Munster title is the next best like you know and it was, an, it was an outstanding way to win it Is that the biggest thing you got from that Clare game just the confidence because from then on were you always able to look back at it and say well I scored three goals in a Munster championship game I proved that I can do it and that every day you went out was it always kind of in your head you know I'm capable of scoring goals today Definitely uh, Fenton yeah I, I firmly believe even to this day and I won't tell you what age I am, to be honest with you, that um, I can still get the goals. You know what I'm saying? I, I just had a, I just had the confidence in myself that the ball felt to me around the square or felt to me that I had a bit of time, an extra second, that I could finish the ball to no matter who was in goal. And I think really it came from maybe, you know, my, my club career too, I was able to bang him in there when you're playing with your club. And to bring it to inter-county team, in the inter-county scene, like, you know, um, that, that day against Clare and the two against Tip and even the goal in the Munster final, do you know, I think uh, people, the other, other opponents feared me from being around the square that the ball could break. And, you know, I often, in, in the 2005 game against Cork, again, I, we didn't win it, but Cork beat us. And I still managed to get a goal in, in three or four or five Munster Championship games in a row. So, it, it, it's like a strike in the Premier League when he's getting 20 goals a season. Like, you know, when he's confident, he, he knows what an it is. Or he goes to train before match and he has a practice. And I did that. I went up to my club hanging towers at the crossbar, etc., putting the ball in there hitting the stanchion in, in the side knitting stuff that other lads wouldn't have done maybe or other players wouldn't have done that they went away and did it themselves like you know and like, if you want to be be the best or try to be the best you have to train like the best like you know you look at Eddie Brin one of the deadliest finishers in, in Hull and like you know and look I would rate myself a good finisher so I'd not be headed about it. Was that the first hat-trick you'd scored? I mean I know you obviously 
club level before that with Lismore. It was your it was your first senior level, but even though Waterford underage ranks with minor and under twenty one or anything like that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. It would have been my first hat trick. Yeah, uh, it would have been. I'm trying to think there. Going back to minor, I know I got a few goals at minor level, alright, but I'd never gotten a hat trick, like you know. And I suppose I, 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 I got another hat trick in in zero seven, like you know. But it, it, look, it's it's just I think it's more timing, thinking uh, coming in from the wing. Um, you could be you could be there too early, and get caught under the ball. Again, what sticks out for me is, is the drawing game over against Cork in the Ireland quarter final in two thousand seven, where. Oh, McGrath took a shot and we got a free out of it after that free. We got the draw from him. He just passed me by at the same ball and I was just there too early and Paul Flynn obviously hit the shot and Sully covered the ball or Don Lowe covered the ball. We got a free and we got the draw. It's just my point being that you could be there too early if, if, if you don't time it right. Like, you know, I was able to read the game. I know my players, Fintan, Owen Kelly and Tony, sometimes they may miss hit the ball and you'd have to be around the square there. You'd have a fair chance of getting, of getting a break off them. Like, you know, but again, you know, it was just timing your own, taking the chance, and being around the danger, the, the danger zone when you got that chance. Yeah, because because I'm guessing the timing of the runs is more important for you because you played most of your career in the half forward line. Say the year before this game in 2004, John Milan had scored a hat trick in the Munster final against Cork. But you know, he's he's playing in corner forward. You think maybe more chances are going to arrive, so you really had to you know get those runs timed perfectly and then take those chances when they came for you. Yeah, definitely, Fenton and. You know, it was like sometimes wing backs are more comfortable facing the ball when they're out around their own wing back position. The minute you bring them right into the corner back position, some backs are can 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 handle it. But again, every back doesn't like being turned towards his own goal. And if you've got a half back around the square, um, it's a different position than than a natural full back then that's solely playing there and being naturally full back that he used to be playing there. But if you've got Sean Og or John Gardner or as I said, Connor Plunkett or Shawnee McMahon around the around the, the the full back area. They're not comfortable doing it. Like you know, and that was my job to make them uncomfortable to get them around the square. Maybe try and get a high ball off and get a break off the post and 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 try and get that goal. It was the start of a great run for you in that particular venue, wasn't it? I mean, the amount of great moments you had, like you mentioned, the hat trick in two thousand seven, uh, in the months of final against Limerick, and obviously twenty ten the the replay against Cork into the Killeen and end. But it it all started for you in the goal scoring sense that day in Temple Stadium against Clare. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, hundred percent. I just, I couldn't. I don't think I'd have the belief in myself. It, it, it really took off me goal scoring. Um, I won't say career. Me goal scoring. Uh, the way I could finish the ball to the net, like you know, you know there were semi finals against Cork. I was getting whatever it is about Torres. I seem to play well there. Do you know what I'm saying? Most of my goals I got were in Torres. So they were. Um, Love scoring in Parky Quay again. The old Parky Quay, which is fantastic, but. You know, it just bears down to the the, the, the day in zero four where Justin put his faith back in me. I, I didn't maybe probably wasn't in Justin's plans from two thousand and two to two thousand and three. Next minute, I went away and worked hard myself, and I know for a fact this came back to me there when we when we finished up that Justin had a hundred belief in me that he knew I was able to do this thing. to just get out of me was the thing that like, you know he needed me to go away and myself, and I did, and he trusted me and. and Look, I saw so, so just Justin, you know, Fenton and taking this call off you. Like, you know, if I, had, if I hadn't got these goals, I wouldn't be taking the calls off. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just so I also wish to him and my teammates for, for being there for that. Like, you know, well, you certainly didn't look back for the rest of that year. You ended up with six championship goals in that 2004 season and then obviously memorably eight in 2007. So I think it's easy to understand why uh, that had such a big impact on you, Dan. Thanks a million for joining us today on the Life Changing Moments podcast series on the 42 with UPMC. 